Hey, welcome back to the workshop and this project uh, for this video is uh, these levelling feet which I've put on the Myford Super 7. You can see I've got four, one on each, one under each corner and I'm going to go through how I made those and why I made them was uh, the original uh, lathe had these levelling feet uh, which were made by the previous owner and they were all right but you can see what uh, that was that that section was bolted down to the cabinet and the lathe sat on these nuts here these half inch nuts and that's a um, that's a half inch let's focus it that's a half inch Whitworth thread there so it's very coarse and this is about a, a probably a quarter inch up the top here uh, which is very small and um, some of them were threaded because they'd been over tightened and it just was not very good so I thought I'd make something that was basically a machinist's jack now let's get a better look at them so here they are in cl close up and it's got a cap screw in the top which bolts down to this top section which is threaded and there's screws there so you can get um, put a, a pin in there and, and, and uh, finally adjust it and there's a lock collar here a, a nut which locks down locks the thread and this base here is bolted down to this thick plate um, so what it allows me to do is to is to basically just adjust the the the, the feet to be level, uh, and there's quite a fine thread on 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 that uh, threaded section, um, so it allows quite fine control. Now, obviously, I've finished the project now, and I'm putting the video together. So I thought I'd run through the steps uh, fairly quickly. It's a pretty simple project. It's basically a machinist jack. So um, you know, I had to I had to start off. By cutting some uh, cutting some two inch um, thick steel, uh, cutting off some some lengths, and um, I did that. I, I parted them off and finished them off on on the um, bandsaw because I'm a chicken. Um, sometimes I can part right off, but uh, you know it just depends. And this was pretty gummy. It wasn't anything special. It was just a bit of hot rolled. Uh, steel that I had floating around. Anyway, so I parted those off, uh, drilled them out, bored them out, and um, cut an internal thread on them. Uh, now I've got a tap uh, which I decided to use for this project. It's a massive monster tap. Uh, here it is there. So I don't even know what it is. There's no markings on it to say what it is. It just says five on the end, so who knows. Um, uh, but um, I worked out, I think it, I can't remember what, it, what uh, pitch it was. I think it was, I think it was 18. Yeah, so I, I, I bored them out on the lathe and single pointed the threads chased them out with the tap, got them all nice and consistent and parted them off um, and that was pretty much the body stun. Uh, then I had to machine down some more steel, cut some more uh, uh, well actually I machined down some steel and um, cut the threads in, uh, single pointed the, the, the external thread and uh, tested it against the bodies that I'd made so it was a nice fit. Uh, and then parted them off. I cut the, um, I cut these, uh, the holes in the top on the on the mill. There was nothing special. I think I just used a. Um, a oh no, I used. I think I used the rotary table. I can't remember now. Uh, yes, I did, and um, I did that four times. So I ended up with basically four machinist jacks. Um, and then I decided I wanted to put these lock nuts on, so I needed to machine some more steel down, cut another thread, chase it out with a tap, part them off, 
and then I put them in the mill and cut these um, slots in them so I could get this um, this wrench on the outside and that's a standard Myford wrench that you use to adjust the bearings on the Super 7 so it's quite handy uh, it doesn't it's not really a perfect fit but it works it does a good job you can tighten them up loosen them out um, works really well and something saved me having to make another spanner um, so yes made the four uh, lock nuts and I didn't film it but I uh, I, ca I case hardened them the foot I I tried them and because it was mild steel they were getting burrs on them and getting chewed up so I put them in some cherry red got them really hot put them in cherry red uh, you have to do it outside it makes a horrible amount of toxic smoke um, heat them right up and quench them cut some uh, decorative grooves in there powder coated the the bases uh, and uh, so they are all finished I cut an M10 um, thread in the top of these uh, on the top surface of the jacks uh, then took the lathe out which was terrifying I didn't I filmed a little bit of that but um, yeah, I, I don't really know what I'm doing so uh, anyway I, I got away with it um, found out that M10 was too big <laughs> really needed to be M8 so had to do a bit of surgery on those I put some sleeves in bought them out put some sleeves in tapped them in M8 fix that problem um, they bolt down M10 um, so, so I drilled these out a bit because they were they weren't a, you know needed a bit of play uh, these plates were here and they are pretty rough so I surface ground those got them nice and flat now uh, that seemed to help things a bit and I put some I don't know what it is probably some butyl rubber some kind of rubber that I had oh no it's silicon it was the silicon stuff that I bought ages ago uh, anyway I cut some of that up put that under it uh, just to seal it I don't know take out any any small inconsistencies and spread the load squashed it down it's really tightly bolted from underneath so there's just a bolt in the bottom of that which goes through to the underneath and a nut on the other side tighten them right down yeah got the, got the lathe back on and um, then I just what I did was I used my uh, machinist level I've got this uh, machinist level here which is a hang on, oh yeah it does point yeah point oh two millimeters per meter it is so basically a thou it's, it's level to within a thou at a, at a point oh it shouldn't really mix my measurements um, what's O2 20 microns 20 microns of a meter which is really sensitive so so what I did was um, first of all uh, I got it level at, at this end uh, at, at the headstock end got it level uh, pretty close and then got it got it got it level horizontally and then what I did was um, yeah, horizontally it's not bad um, and then I then I got it horizontally level so um, and then went went around again until I got it basically dead level in both directions um, and then I put a testing I put a, I've got a Morse taper 2 test bar which I put into the headstock and ran an indicator along it and uh, yeah it was great so I mean a lot of people will tell you you don't need to level a lathe you need to make sure it's straight uh, and that's true um, but it's a good thing to do to start with it level and then check how straight it is because um, in this case when it was level it was straight and it was obviously relaxed and where it wanted to be the sensitive anyway uh, that's the project um, I'm going to go back now and cut in all of the bits of film to make this 
this to, well you would have seen that it's already happened by the time you've watched this there's no point telling you now um, and a good project quite an easy project there's a few different designs around um, there's, there's one guy who just uses um, right hand section and, and, and makes little um, uh, expanding uh, shims that, that are threaded together that's a good way too I just I didn't I used what I had this is what I had and I really like how it turned out and um, uh, great project and you'll notice I've got a uh, a really nice uh, drip tray there not really a drip tray a chip tray this is a really great thing that I made um, brass uh, to folded that up myself and um, great way to clean the chips out and the, 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 the risers give me plenty of space to get under here with a brush as well or a, more often a vacuum cleaner and why is it brass well because uh, the scrapyard had big sheets of brass lying around and they they don't charge too much I think they charge 10 bucks a kilo so Maybe it cost me 20 bucks, I don't know. But I bought some and it was kicking around the workshop and I thought, why not use it? So, I hope you, hope you enjoyed that video. hope it's not too long. Um, and um, I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe. And see you next time.